Hey, everybody. Welcome into episode 149 of the Leaning Into Leadership podcast. My guest on the show this week is Sean Gaylord. Now, if you don't know Sean, let me tell you this. Sean is the author of the book, The Pepper Effect, Tap Into the Magic of Creativity, Collaboration, and Innovation. He's an accomplished educator with over 30 years of experience. He's been a principal in multiple different schools. He's won several awards as principal of the year, including being a finalist for the North Carolina Principal of the Year. He's done work at the secondary or at the uh, post-secondary level. Sean has a fantastic podcast, got an awesome blog. His podcast is called The Principal Liner Notes, and it is fantastic. I had an opportunity to be on his podcast here just a few weeks back. He is also the founder of the hashtag Celebrate Monday movement on Twitter or X or whatever the kids are calling it right now. Uh, Sean has uh, presented and served as a keynote speaker at numerous conferences. He lives in North Carolina with his wife and follows the amazing escapades of his three grown children. Sean and I sat down and had a really great conversation. Um, and I know I say that every week, but folks, I'll tell you this. When Sean and I sat down, we first recorded for his uh, podcast. And then a couple of weeks later, we looped back and had this conversation. And both times, the before we hit the record button was probably the best stuff. And it's unfortunate we didn't get that in either of the episodes, but I think we did a pretty good job of recapturing some of the stuff that Sean was really passionate about, which is what does that transition look like, right? Right now, across the country, this is happening. Principals are leaving their schools and a new principal is coming in. And there's that transition that takes place. And what are some of the things that can help make that transition as effective and as positive as possible for both the outgoing and the incoming principal. That's the core of our conversation today. I think it's an absolutely fantastic conversation. I know you're going to love it, and you're getting the whole thing right after this. And again, here on the show, I've talked about why building connections is so important and how relationships really make or break you as a leader. And today is a perfect example of why you lean into those connections, why you lean into those relationships, because you never know how those relationships will then lead to additional connections and relationships. And uh, today on the show, uh, my guest is Sean Gaylord. And Sean and I are going to talk about leadership. We're going to talk about um Oh man, all kinds of different things related to leadership. We'll probably talk a little bit about music because we have to. But when I think about my connection with Sean, and we've been connected a long time, folks. We've been on uh, social media together for a very long time. But only recently, probably in the last three or four months, have we really connected and been on camera together a couple of times. Uh, I was just on his podcast here not too long ago. And that, that connection, that, that relationship piece, it was a mutual relationship. Somebody who said, hey, have you two met? Because you two need to, and just making that connection. So again, a testament to the power of relationships and connections. Um, I could ramble on this forever, but I should probably just shut up for a minute here and just welcome my guest, Sean, into the show. Um, Sean, thanks so much for joining me here on Leaning Into Leadership. Darren, thank you so much. And now uh, keep 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 going, man. This is, I mean, what what I love about um, our our connections. I think in it, we we've been connected a long time, and and very grateful for Josh Tovar for for really kind of bringing us to together. Yeah, and I'm so grateful for for that gift. But I think that's that's one important riff, and I know we're going to go into several riffs. But what you, you you just mentioned something. One important riff about relationships and connections, and that and that is an essential riff for leaders and and to find those kindred spirits and to find those folks that that you can kind of lean into and lock arms with and 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 grow together. Uh, so I, I think I think man that that's another book right there, pal. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know every every time you and I talk now, it's, uh, oh, hey, you know, this would be a really good book. I mean, we, we were talking about transitions earlier uh, yeah. before we hit the record button. And I know we're going to we're going to chase that riff a little bit, uh, a little bit, too. Uh, really quick uh, for for my listeners who maybe don't know um, as much about you as I do. 
let's uh, jump in the uh, DeLorean and set the uh, set the dial to wherever it is, whatever time you would like to go back to, and maybe kind of bring us forward to where we are. Talk a little bit about your journey. Um, kind of orient my audience to who Sean Gaylord is. Well, I dig the Back to the Future reference, so we're going to make like a tree and get out of here, hey, butthead. Get out of so. here. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, but if we were to go back in time and get that flux capacitor uh, working, Darren, uh, this is uh, year 32 for for me in, in, in education. I, I started off as, as a classroom uh, teacher in a, in a fifth grade uh inner city Catholic school in Washington, DC. Um, and, and that took me on a journey from, from fifth grade to being a high school English teacher. And that, that is truly uh, being in the classroom is where my heart and my fiber and my DNA is. Uh, I, I'm very grateful for the teachers that touched my life and, and had an impact on me. And um, I, I'm very grateful for uh, the fact that I was able to kind of carry on uh, that legacy. I remember Darren years ago asking my dad, you know, uh, at, at a very young age, um, what was a great job to have? What was a great job to to be when when I when I um, when I grow up? And, and my dad said, teacher. And and that's something that that I think has has always stayed stayed within me. The fact that I'm able to help others see things in themselves that. Uh, they may not necessarily see in their own self, and, I, and I've had a lot of teachers that have that have helped me. Um, that that teaching uh, trajectory led me to a career in administration, um, where uh, and and again, all all of the schools that I've kind of been a part of have all been kind of what what we would deem um, t uh, Title One, uh, quote unquote, low performing, underperforming schools, because I I really believe that, um, and and having been that kid in that office. Um, that, that it's important part of my core is, is to advocate for, uh, our future world changers in, in title one schools and, and, and to be able to provide access and, and, uh, equitable access to those images of possibility. So I've taken on a lot of, um, turnaround schools and, uh, I've been, as, as I've been a teacher at every grade level K-12, I've been a principal at, at every level, uh, K-12. Um, along that, that, that leadership uh, line, um, again, my heart is in the classroom, but my heart is in coaching and, and helping other leaders, just like you do, like you've helped me in, in, in many ways and being on that road to awesome. So I, uh, I'm, I'm very fortunate that I, I was able to write a book uh, through uh, Dave Burgess Consulting, Inc., The Pepper Effect, uh, which was my mashup of, of Beatles and leadership and culture and, and, and innovation. And like you, I podcast and, and, and like you, uh, I try to stay connected and, and to be in the PLN and, and, and to help others um, do and be their very best in service of our future world changers, our kids. That's our why. That's at our core. And uh, somewhere along the way, in in the buildings we serve, in the buildings that I that I've been principal at, I, I believe it's the it, there's the next Steve Jobs or the, or the next Oprah Winfrey uh, or 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 the next Bob Marley uh, or the next John Lennon or whoever that may be. And if they're not that next person, that world changer, then maybe that student in our school or our district is going to be the the father, the mother, the mentor, the teacher, the superintendent, the principal of that next world changer. So I, uh, I'm very, that's, that's my core. That's my why. And I'm, I'm happy to be on this journey with you, man. And that is just, that's absolutely spectacular. Uh, so much, so much great stuff in there. And I got to decide where, where I want to start unpacking some <laughs> of, of this. Uh, so much good stuff there. Actually, you know what I want to do? I want to talk just real quickly about the pepper effect and not necessarily like, you know, going deep into the book or anything like that. I actually, I know you just had uh, your book anniversary here, yeah. sixth book answer six book yep. anniversary here just very recently uh congratulations on that um a very very successful book my question about the book is this though um i mean you talked about it being kind of a mashup and everybody when you know, anybody who does a book has their own kind of core behind why they do it and and what it is that that compelled them to in your case, reach out to Dave Burgess and say, 
hey, I got this idea. And obviously Dave fell in love with the idea and the rest is history. But what what was kind of at the core of that? What was kind of your compelling, I this is the story I want to tell that led to writing that book? Well, I think it comes down to, Darren, and thank you for that question, is, is by nature, I, I consider myself to be a storyteller. And, uh, you know, sometimes um, I, I can riff and ramble with the best of them and, and riff and ramble off topic. Um, and, but, but in a lot of my leadership and in a lot of the faculty meetings that, that um, I would steward or, or lead or whatever, uh, I, and even when I taught, I, I, you know, I'm a high school English teacher. Um, I, I just really value the nature of story. And, and I found that in, in, in my faculty meetings, just like in teaching, I, I, I would go back to passions. I would try to model my passions and emulate, um, you know, relentlessly that, that we, we should share who we are and be who we are in, in, in front of the people that we serve. So, um, there, there would be, you know, especially my first principalship, I was telling a lot, making a lot of references to the Beatles because it's my favorite band. And, and, um, I, I, I've just been so in, inspired and influenced by them, but I took a lot of their elements, you know, and just in terms of my own reflection and, 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 and self-therapy, um, you know, especially when I would hit those, those kind of dark times as a principal and go, well, the Beatles failed. The Beatles had flops. The Beatles had, had, um, had successes, but what made them great as a, as, as a, as a band? Well, they, they played to each other's strengths. And I thought, you know, there's some similarities and parallels to, to, um, leadership and, and, and what I'm attempting to do as, as, as a principal at, at the time, I was really trying to create this band and this innovative band. So a lot of those stories, uh, in which I was making parallels between the Beatles and leadership and culture and innovation, um, filtered into my work as a principal um and and in a very long story short led led to the formation of 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 the pepper effect um which, which is basically um you know make your school a masterpiece and 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 what we're what we're and, and a masterpiece in the true sense of the word is something that is is timeless and that lasts and that has universal appeal it's the same thing with teaching and learning. We're creating masterpieces for our kids and and and, that, and creating that 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 impact. So um, I thought, why not why not dare to be great as as my father uh, often says, and let's dare to be the Beatles and dare to do something different and creative and innovative in service of kids and teachers and, and families and communities. You know, I, I really value that so much, and I think about you know what you just said in there about creating your masterpiece and you and I were talking just before we hit the record button um, about uh, about individual leaders about leadership teams about creating that you know kind of that compelling vision but we were also talking about that transition that takes place right when when one school leader leaves and another school leader comes in I was uh, in a bit of a unique situation I don't think it's super unique uh, but when I transitioned from assistant principal to principal in the same building, I was only the third principal in 35 years in that building. My predecessor, 17 years, his 18 years. Um, all still were in the community. Um, and actually the predecessor to, to those two uh, would still come and have coffee with me. Um, mm. So, you know, a lot of history there and it was great to be able to have communication with them and to learn from them. But I fell into the trap, actually, of trying to prove that I wasn't my predecessor. And I probably undid some things that that he did extremely well, right? And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm leading to a question here, I really am. Um, and and where, where I want to go with this really is, as new leaders come in, and you know, on, on my show, one of the big areas that I'm focused on really are those early career leaders and how we can as seasoned veteran leaders, we can support those earlier career leaders who maybe are taking their first principalship this fall. They're diving in and they're just, they've just been handed the keys and they're like, okay, now what do I do? 
right? Yeah. Sean's telling me I need to go create my masterpiece. I got lost when I walked down the hallway. Um, I've I've got a ways to go before I can create my masterpiece. So let let let's dig into that transition part, right? Because yeah. you you were kind of starting to go there before we hit the record button. So what what are some thoughts you have? Uh, I mean, you've you've stepped into hey uh, new as the principal uh, before. What are some things that you might share with those early career leaders about kind of that transition piece on their way to making their masterpiece? That's a that's a thank you. I, and I I enjoyed uh, kind of where 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 we land where we landed before and, and where we're going now with this because yeah. there's a lot of things in what we call or refer to as principal school that are not taught. It's the same thing in teacher school. There's just a lot of things that, you know, you can have the theory and, and not to knock theory and not to knock research and not to knock any of those things. But but there there are things that we pick up and sometimes we learn the hard way or or the easy way. And I, I do think if we were to re restructure uh, the trajectory of, of graduate programs and leadership programs, there, there has to be something in there um, as a prerequisite on transitioning between leaders, because there, there, it is a very delicate dance. There, there, there is a level of professionalism that you have to maintain, but then, then there's a lot of heart and soul and personal stuff that are invested into that. Um, you know, people uh, in an organization. Um, the, you know, as, as Todd Whitaker says, you don't pe people don't leave buildings; they leave people. And and so when when the leader leaves, you know, and 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 if there's been a great relationship between that leader, that principal, and the faculty and staff, and then you come in, uh, that that can be very difficult. Uh, it can also be very difficult too. Sometimes there isn't a transition because the the your predecessor was removed, and and you don't really have much to to go on. But if I think back to my my first principalship, I came in with arrogance. I came in with an ego. I came in thinking that I had arrived and that and that the title was going to sustain my leadership. And and that um, you know, based upon the title and and my wonderful uh, you know three piece suit and my and my starch shirts and and my polished. Um, you know, floor shimes and, and and all those things that that I was the principal and people were going to listen. Well, that was not the case. And and I and I remember at the time initially being very dismissive and judgmental of my predecessor, which was a mistake. Um I I you know was trying to blot out his hard work and the good things that he had done for the school. Now there were some things that I didn't agree with that he had done, and there were some moves that, and, and that's fine and that's natural. But I would say to 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 new, new leaders, do not dismiss completely. Now you may be told by the superintendent to to dismiss that because it was illegal yeah. and those things, but in this kind of situation, you know, I, I really I, I was unfair um, and and dismissive. And, you know, I, I had a few falls from the horse and uh, falls uh, on the way to Damascus. And um, I remember um, reaching out to to my predecessor and and calling him and, and asking for help. And um, and really that conversation uh, I truly valued. And, and, and one of the lessons, Darren, that, that still stays with me. Um, that, that he shared with me and the way he said, it, and I'll, I'll edit it a little bit, uh, because we'll keep, we'll keep it G rated. Um, but, but he told me, you know, man, and he was kind of looking at me in my suit and everything, you know, sometimes, sometimes we, we got to roll up our sleeves and, and, uh, you know, take off the tie and put on the, uh, the pom poms and, and cheer for our people and for our kids. Now, that was a powerful lesson, and it was something that I needed to hear. And 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 since that time, um, you know, because I've been in five different schools, um, I, I have really um, tried to to just kind of 
get with the principal as best as I can to learn, to listen, ask questions. I want to be behind closed doors with that, that principal so we can have a frank and honest and sincere conversation. And, 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 and I would say to, to new principals or folks going in, really be intentional with that transition really, really listen to that principle. They can, they can tell you some things. Um, I, I, I try to ask different questions, uh, very specific questions of, of principles so that I can get kind of a sense because that principle is, is, is part of the DNA of that building. And, and they know, uh, you know, where, where the good copy machine is. They know that, that the, the, the third toilet in, in, in the boys' bathroom is the one that's always going to stop up. And, and you got to jiggle it just this way. I mean, they, they, they know all of those things. Use that opportunity to learn. Use that opportunity to listen. And, and then from there, draw your own conclusions and, 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 and go and do and, and lead and, and, and connect with the people you serve. But connect with that predecessor as best as you can because, you know, again, you know, sometimes I've been, I've been in this situation where, um, yeah, the predecessor has, has left the building, um, but, but certain members of the faculty have not let that person go or the, and, 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 and right. there's, there's a back channel. Um, it's a lot of challenges there. <laughs> a lot of challenges that is true. There. That is really true. Yeah. You know, in my situation, um, man, listening to you talk, it's just, uh, at a point folks if you're watching the video you saw it but i i'm like raising my hand and pointing at me like yep that's me and that's me you're you're singing my song sean and i i think here one of the big takeaways you know uh, for for all leaders that you know have have gone down this road you were not alone you are not the only one who did that and you know to think that you know hey i have arrived and um you know, I, I listened to my friend Todd Bloomer the other day, you know, and Todd is a, an occasional co-host here on the show, you know, once a month we have Todd on, and um, I listened to Todd at the Texas Secondary School Principal Conference here recently, and one of the things that he told his audience during his presentation, during his, his presentation on, on the blueprint for landing and, and being successful in your first year as a, as a principal, he told them, you know, once you've got that position, you know, close the door, put your feet up on the desk and say, I made it. And then get your feet off the desk and get to work. Right um, on. But, you know, for, for a moment or so, yes, feel good about that. But then, then you got to get to work. And uh, I think, I think that's huge. And, you know, uh, many of us will, will walk into that same trap and, and more people are going to walk into that trap again this fall. Uh, just because I think a big part of it is just, human nature right you know uh if if you've been in education a long time you see that principal office and you you know if you aspire to it you've been thinking man when it's my job i'm gonna do this or man when when i get to make the decisions this is how it'll be done and then you get into that position and you learn very quickly um, if you're paying attention you learn very quickly that the history the uh, institutional knowledge that was in that office before you um, is invaluable. So whenever possible, I think it's it's critical to, to be able to have those conversations. When I became a superintendent, I was fortunate. The superintendent was leaving on good terms. Um, I got to spend a, a great deal of time talking with him and learning from him and learning what was working well and and certainly I did not see eye to eye with him on everything. But the, again, like you said, that's fine. But at least I understood where he was coming from with a lot of those pieces. So um, certainly that transition piece is, is really, really big. Um, let, let's maybe go in just a slightly different direction. I, I, I could keep hammering on this one and we could just keep riffing on this, but, but I think I want to go a little bit different direction. Uh, yeah, right now, I, I, I'm curious. I'm curious your take on uh, again. Let's let's lean into those those newer school leaders. Um, it it's an area of mine that you know is is kind of a strength. But I want to get your take on what should the new leader do when 
assembling their leadership team. Maybe maybe they come in and they have a couple of assistant principals, or they come in and they have a few lead teachers, or maybe they have a large team. What are some steps as sticking with the transition concept that when we lean into our team that you think are, are really of, of value for those new leaders? Well, I think there's several things to consider. And, and again, as I mentioned, that transition requires a high level of awareness, a high level of sensitivity, and, and a high level of connectedness. And, you know, as if you're coming from a situation where, you know, five was your magic number and you had five people on your team and, and you had people that was, was like your Mr. Spock and your Dr. McCoy and your Eupora, <laughs> and, and you had, you, 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 you are accustomed to that. Well, guess what? You're not on the Starship Enterprise anymore. You know, you're, you're on uh, the Millennium Falcon. And, and it isn't the bridge. It's, it's you and, and Chewy and R2D2 and C3PO, right? So, and, and as much as you might want the Starship Enterprise and, 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 and that command crew, um, you, you can't fit um, 12 people or however many people that, that sit on the, on the bridge of the Enterprise in the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon. It only seats four. So if you're in that situation, and and you've got a and you're in a you you've gone from a twelve seater to a four seater, you you've got to accept it's a four seater right now. I, I wouldn't try to to to, to force uh, eight more people into the cockpit. You know, let's let's see, see where what you have, assess your strengths. You know, there and there's all kinds of of, of ways to do that. Um, you know, whether you're using the Gallup uh, strengths, you know, finder or those things, or just or just asking, hey. And being vulnerable, I, I want to know what, what what your gifts are, what your strengths are, what 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 are your roles. Find out what those roles are specifically, and 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 you go from there. And then you you start you know assessing talent in 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 that in that cockpit because there may be some folks there you may not know this that that were vying for the same position, <laughs> and 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 or 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 there or there may be folks that loved the previous principal and hate you. And, and, and so you've got to kind of navigate through that. I wish, I wish I had an easy answer for that because it, some of that stuff does come up, but, but while you're kind of getting a sense of that history, you also need to be thinking forward about the needs of the school, the vision, the mission, and, 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 and that team is really your model team for how you want the rest of the school to to interact as 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 a team and and what is what is valued and 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 upheld in term in terms of that um i would also tell new leaders like that that new team of yours is you, you know and, and be real careful with 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 first person pronouns so so it this is our team this we we are are working together I would be very intentional with language. And, and then I would also think that that team also is your opportunity leader, new leader, to, to coach up, to build up, and, 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 and maybe even build a succession plan. Or, you know, I take great pride at the fact that just about every assistant principal or mentee or, or principal fellow I have has, has, has gone on, has moved on. And, and I like to think that, that I've had some hand in it by, by teaching that leadership team became my leadership class. And, and, you know, that's where, you know, we, we may have been doing a deep dive in a book or, you know, I've got, I've got Covey's trust and inspire, you know, Hey, let's do a book study or, Hey, I was just reading chapter five. Let's, you know, maybe, maybe we won't read the whole book, but I want to talk about chapter five with you and, and how can we, or, you know, that, that that's where you're just kind of that's your like leadership 101 class right um but then you're also looking at the rest of your building too for other possibilities because maybe that leadership team that was set up was set up in a way to alienate faculty and staff maybe that leadership team was was this this kind of uh you know mafia that and and, that, and maybe you do have to to break up the four seater Maybe, maybe you do need to make that a 12 seater. Maybe you do need to make that a little more, more inclusive. So I, I would just say 
to to that new leader really make sure that you you've got that intentionality that that you're you're you're, you're figuring out where, where people are and what they need and and be very very careful with dismantling that team you may have to um but but be very careful i wouldn't i wouldn't let, i wouldn't let that be like a day one kind of thing you got to kind of like ride that out and see right. see where see where where it lands but it can be such an exciting thing uh i'm very proud of the fact darren that the very first assistant principal that i hired is now a superintendent and um you know she she definitely got that superintendency on 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 the on on her own strengths but i i just take great pride in the fact that that uh i i was a small part of that by by coaching and and helping and empowering yeah you know, you said you said some really, really great things in there. A aside from the fact that you had a remarkably accurate Star Trek and Star Wars reference in the same sentence, that in and of itself is is phenomenal. Uh, but but within that, you talked about that your role, your school became your leadership classroom, and you know, I I feel so strongly about the responsibility, and this is part of why I asked that question, but I feel so strongly about the responsibility that we have as leaders to grow more leaders and right to on. lean into those individuals. And you talking about that and, and basically talking about the Sean Gaylord ship tree, uh, I think is, is huge, folks, because when you're in it, for a while, you'll start to see that as well. You'll start to see, if you're doing it right, those assistant principals, those aspiring leaders that you have go on to these other roles. Um, a couple of mine uh, are super, well, a handful of mine are superintendents. A whole lot of mine are principals um, and, and so forth. And um, in, in a way, you kind of you kind of live a little bit vicariously through them knowing that you know you at least you know were able to put a few footprints on the beach you know uh, of their journey and uh, i just I, I think that's i think that's pretty uh, pretty amazing um and I, I really appreciate that you went there but let's let's just go off the beaten path for just a few minutes before i ask the last question that that i ask here on the show let's um let's let's talk a little bit i mean we've hit some we've hit some movie stuff here we've hit just a little bit of music stuff here i I just I want to dig a little bit here. Um, I know you are an absolutely huge Beatles fan, and I'm just curious. Tell us, tell us a little bit of kind of the, I don't know the backstory. What's what is the hook with the Beatles that has like become so strong with you? Mm. There's a few. There's a few levels to that, man. Um, fifth grade. Uh, and and I, I talk about this in uh, in the Pepper Effect. And I talk about this when I go out and, and speak. But I had uh, an amazing teacher, um, Mrs. McMonagle, um, who um, you know was from Britain, and um, and I was um, new to the school as a fifth grader. I was the only uh, black student. In, in the class, uh, we moved, my dad had gotten a promotion, his job, um, and we moved from Southern California or Northern California to North Carolina, total culture shock for me. And uh, an incredibly long story short, I got busted uh, saying a certain word on the way into school. And, um, and, and uh, Mrs. McMonagle heard that. Now, Mrs. McMonagle uh, is, is, is about four, four foot eight. And we were all taller than she was, but she just had this presence <laughs> and this charisma. And I remember, uh, she, um, learning about, you know, he hearing this and she came over and, and, uh, and, and the reason why it's said this bad word, because a student, a uh, friend of mine had, had pulled my backpack off, off my shoulders and all the books fell out. Well, in, in a copy I had, I had in, in my bag, I, I had a copy of the Count of Monte Cristo. And, and it was the, the unabridged version uh, of the Count of Monte Cristo because I love to read. Now, I hadn't really let on about that in, 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 in class at the time. And in fact, I was in the low reading group, and, and, um, but I still love to read. And uh, I knew that the students that were in the high reading group, uh, and I, I picked up on this at, at the age of 10, were, were reading stuff that I either already read or that I wanted to read. Well, well anyway, 
two things happened to that. I got in trouble, first of all, for, for dropping, dropping a word I shouldn't have dropped. And, um, but what changed my life that day was, was, uh, my teacher asked me about the Count of Monte Cristo and, and quizzed me on it. And, and, and she said to me two things, Mr. Gailey, um, you're going to come to group. And I forget the name of the group reading group 15 a, but that was the high group. That was the first thing she told me. And then the second thing she said was, I need you to listen to the Beatles because uh, they they have, I forget, how, how did she frame this? They they have a better command of language than you do, and and you need to listen to their music. And that that changed everything for me, that moment, wow. from that teacher. And so when I talk about changing the world <laughs> and, 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 and that kind of moral imperative that we have as educators, I, I, mean, I know you felt it. I felt it. We, we've all been on the, the receiving end of that. And uh, yeah. so that's what led down to that kind of path. And, and then soon after, uh, that's when, uh, you know, sadly, John Lennon was killed um, and, and his music was everywhere. And, and so I just kind of grabbed onto that and, 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 and developed not only a love for their music, but a love for language, a love for collaboration, a love for innovation, a love for, for making a masterpiece and, and making the, the, uh, the impossible possible. So, um, that, that again, one teacher, that was, that was the, uh, that was the thing. Man, I'll tell you what, your high school English kids must've absolutely loved your class. Uh, that that's <laughs> like the, the, the big thing resonating in my, I mean, there's so many great pieces in there, but I'm thinking, man, high school English. I loved high school English. I really, really did. Uh, like you, I love to read. Um, I actually became a science teacher, but um, I always connected well with those teachers who were just super passionate about, about something deep in the subject, not just, you know, love Julius Shakespeare, uh, uh, Julius Caesar, but really who who could go deep into that and connecting that with the music piece because i mean those they just run so parallel um uh, but not not every teacher does that so i would bet your i would bet your students absolutely loved going to your class oh, well thanks darren i'm i'm very honored by that from from you and, and and what you bring to the table at road to awesome and and being a a former high school principal and former uh, superintendent. So I, I just take, I'm, I'm grateful. I, I was really lucky yeah. that I got to, I got paid to talk about something I loved to, to a group of kids ev every day. And, um, and so I was very, I'm very honored by that, uh, by what you said, man. Thank you. Yeah. Really no, that's good. awesome. I love that. So, um, Man, we, we could just keep going and going and going and going. Um, and so we'll just have to have you back on the show, not too far down the road. But um, uh, let's do this. We're at that point in the show that uh, I'll ask you the same question I ask everybody. So, uh, Sean, this is the Leaning Into Leadership podcast. So how are you leaning into leadership right now? So I, I would say um, right now, and, and, and I think it has a lot to do with our mutual friend, uh, Elizabeth Damp, you know who you who you, you who you have had on, and we were both honored to endorse yeah. uh, her book, and and she's working on another book on imposter syndrome, and uh, I have really been leaning into that. Um, uh, well, I, the, Elizabeth's book isn't written yet, and I, I look forward to reading it. Um, but this notion of imposter syndrome, and and I've you know, been thinking about, you know, what's been causing or what are some of the causes for leadership burnout or, or, or for, for folks to, to leave, uh, you know, school leadership or any leadership. And, and so I've been really just trying to get to the root of that and, and not only get to the root of that, Darren, but, but also, um, cause it's really, you know, we, it's really easy to admire a problem. And I think we do a lot of that in, in, in education. We're very good about, you know, putting things on sticky notes doing the gallery walk. I'm guilty of this practice too. And, and, and we admire the problem, but then we don't do anything to get to the root of it or to, or to create a solution. And, and, and in my own reflection and in dealing with kind of some of my own doubts and, and cause I'm human and, and, and frailties, um, how can I help others deal and, and, and overcome imposter syndrome? How, how can I be of, of of service it's real fortunate darren you and i were able to connect through another person 
uh, that we we connected with, right? And and uh, but leadership is extremely lonely. So I'm going to use use another space science fiction uh, analogy, right? You know, so you know sometimes we end up like Han Solo, frozen in carbonite, <laughs> and and we're completely alone, right? Uh, or we end up like in 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 the great the great classic film 2001 Space Odyssey, Dave Bowman, man, completely alone, floating in in space, or Matthew McConaughey in the Interstellar, he's alone, and 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 it's isolating. Leadership is very very isolating. So and how how can I be that 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 support? How can I be that service? How can I be that person to to connect a leader or that new leader to, to my friend, Darren, or to my friend, Josh, or to my friend, Elizabeth. So I've really been kind of leaning in into that because it's one thing, you know, hey, imposter syndrome, it's it's horrible. We we, we all sing the blues and and, and it happens, but it, it is it is it is crippling. And, and and I think about like the great ideas and, and the great momentum that was lost because a leader was was facing imposter syndrome because they were dealing with a bad transition with a leader or they were in in, in their own level of, of a toxic culture that they could not control and all of the good that was lost because that leader was was got got, got in their own way uh because of imposter syndrome so i've really really been leaning into that and 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 thinking of ways that um that that i could help you know, I, I had I had a health um, situation, uh, health crisis a few uh, several months ago, and um, you know it it you know we we've got to take care of ourselves and, and do better with that well being. You and I talked about that last week. You know, and yeah. and uh, yeah. you know, so I've just been leaning into that. How how can I help other leaders take better care of of themselves and 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 each other? Yeah, that's outstanding. Uh, so much, so much good stuff there, and I, I, I think, I think so many of us as leaders will, I guess, slide into that space where, one, we we end up isolated. I mean, in and of itself, leadership can be very isolating, right? But sometimes we will isolate ourselves further, um, whether intentionally or unintentionally, and certainly when we start to fall into the imposter syndrome that that wondering you know if if I really am worthy if I really can do this job if mm -hmm. if I really am going to make the right decision or am I going to make a mistake uh, those types of things certainly do allow for for more and more isolation so uh, definitely folks heed Sean's words here I think uh, very very wise words find those people out there that you can connect with that you're already connected with lean into that more and more and more um, you've got two guys right here uh, either in your ear or on your screen who you can lean into as well that uh, have definitely been down the road and have seen that and uh, are happy to to be there to be that support to be that ear so man this has just been so fantastic i cannot tell you how much I value this conversation and how much I appreciate our connection and our friendship. So thank you so much, Sean, for joining me here on the podcast. Darren, thank you. And, and the feeling is, is mutual. I'm, I'm so honored and grateful to be here with you in, in this moment. And I'm grateful for the gift of, of your friendship and, and your connection. I look forward to further conversations, man. I'm, I'm enjoying the heck out of this I'm going to plug this man road to awesome. You know, this is just, just <laughs> such a, it's a heck of a book, man, you know, and, uh, oh, thanks man. It, it really, it really is. So it, 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 this has just been a really good salve and, and, and great opportunity for reflection, but I value you brother. And, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm I appreciate you, man. With you, man. Yeah. Right on. All right. Thanks so much, man. All right. There you go. As advertised, what a fantastic conversation with Sean Gaylord. I appreciate him coming on the show and just sharing so much incredible leadership knowledge with all of us. Make sure you hit the show notes, links, uh, get connected with Sean, go and follow his podcast, his blog. Just consume that content because he's got so much great stuff out there. And now it's time for a pep talk. Earlier this week, I spent a couple of days working with a leadership team, a secondary leadership team in the central part of Nebraska. 
a lot of our work was focused on really getting crystal clear about what matters to them as a core team. But then also, what were they going to do as they go into this new school year about being really intentional with their work, being really purposeful with their time, and just making sure that collectively they create the conditions to allow their people to fulfill the mission of their school district. It was fantastic. And a part of what we did was dive into a couple different leadership case studies. One of the case studies was about a climbing expedition, Mount Everest, 1996. Now, if you know anything about that particular climbing expedition, you know that there were two different groups that were going up. They were paid guides. And unfortunately, a handful of people did not make it back down off that mountain. It was a case that was riddled with leadership misinformation, poor decisions, bad structures, and not sticking to their protocols. One of the quotes that really stood out to our group, though, was at one point, one of the guides had made a statement about how he felt he was working to prepare not the people for the mountain, but unfortunately, the mountain for the people. Now, by that, what he meant was he needed to make sure every person on his team was ready for what they were about to face when they went to climb to the summit at Mount Everest. And unfortunately, he felt like he was having to try to prepare the mountain for the people. Now, if you do any climbing, you understand that there's just no logic there. That's not how it works. We must be preparing our people for the work that lies ahead of them. We can't alter the work because of who our people are. We've got to lean in and make sure our people are prepared for the challenges that are going to be coming at them in the coming year. So as school leaders, I think that's a really important lesson. It's a really important thing to keep in our minds that we must focus on preparing our people for the mountain. Don't try to prepare the mountain for the people. That's what I've got for you this week, folks. Thank you so much for joining me. Be ready, be prepared. Middle of this week, a drop of episode 150 with my friends Todd Bloomer and Dominic Armano. We'll be talking about Todd's upcoming book, The Blueprint, and all kinds of fun stuff. Cannot wait for episode 150. Thank you for joining me here on the Leading Into Leadership podcast. Have a road to awesome week.